Don't touch. What is up with you guys touching people? Aren't you all about consent? What's up with the consent here? There's no consent. Please shut up so we can hear the speakers. No. You're on selfie mode. Well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, so I just drove by Fulton County Courthouse and... I know some of you guys are wondering what's going on with Thugger and the judge. Yeah, I know, I know. So that's what you're here for. You're too busy to read all these clips. So I'm here to give you the recap. And I really appreciate you guys riding along with me. Okay, so let's do this. Now, we know last week the judge, the thug, was trying to put Brian Steele in jail over contempt. And this is how the reaction went. State of Georgia. How about the witness? How about Mr. Copeland, who supposedly announced he's not testifying and he'll sit for two years and then supposedly no, that's, this honorable court, okay. or excuse me, let me rephrase that, this court supposedly said, I can hold you until the end of this trial. Ms. Hilton supposedly said actually all of the defendants and then all 26 people are disposed of. If that's true, what this is, is coercion, witness intimidation, ex parte communications that we have a constitutional right to be present for. So I understand that you're upset towards me, but Mr. I don't know what I did. Mr. Steele, I, I still want to know, should. how did you come upon this information? Who told you? What I want to know is why wasn't I there? Why, sir, I'm going to hold you in contempt if you don't tell me who this, I'm not, I tell, me, tell me who this information don't was don't want to be from. held in contempt. Well, I'm then, not answering that question. That's attorney-client privilege information. I am not uh, attorney-client privilege. Unless you were in my chambers, that's I'm, the only way you can figure out. I am telling I tell you, you what, I'm going to give you five minutes. If you don't tell me don't who have you, to, I'm if you don't tell me who it is, I'm going to put you. In, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you in contempt I because understand. that is not attorney-client privilege. Attorney work product privilege. I am you, not. How did you? Me. How did you get that information I supposedly from that. my chambers? Did somebody tell you? I'm not. You should have told me. Well, yeah, so the judge tried to put him in jail and uh Brian still was not having none of it. So he had Ashley Merchant. If I remember Ashley Merchant, she's the one that went after Fannie Willis during her trial. Visit you at a place that you resided. Okay. I don't understand. You want to give me that. In 2020, so I lived in South Fulton. Okay. That's the only place I lived in South Fulton. Fulton. That's before I had to abandon my home, Judge. All right. And at my so, home in South Fulton, we'll Miss, I never, he never came there, okay? So if you don't so, come someplace, you can't live there. Miss Willis, that's, I'm going to have to caution you. This is going to be my the first time I have to caution you. We have to listen to the questions as asked. And if this happens again and again, I'm going to have no choice but to strike your testimony. So we need to break this down. Miss Merchant's question, I believe, was... Uh, asking whether you lived anywhere other than South Fulton. The blonde bombshell right here. Yeah, this one here. She came out and represented uh, Brian Steele over his case of contempt. The other issue is if it is a criminal contempt and you are finding him guilty of criminal contempt, then we have to have a sentence imposed. Now, civil is where you get to hold him until he complies. No, criminal just... is where you get to impose a sentence, maximum 20 days and a thousand dollar fine. So if you're going to incarcerate him under a criminal contempt, he's got to be sentenced. Well, his 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 contempt is as long as he um, when he tells me what, that's a civil contempt. What the basis of the conversation was who I didn't ask what. But he tells me that, then I can certainly, um, he purges himself of the contempt. Then that's so civil, Judge. That's civil contempt. That's civil. And that's the, that's... Okay. And Judge, that's why we're trying to figure out if it's criminal versus civil. 
So the issue is you're picking and choosing. You're saying, well, you get the bad side of criminal and no bond, but I really am actually trying to punish you civilly, which is when you hold well, someone no, until they comply. Okay, okay. Let, me, let, let me think about this a second, okay? Let me, uh, uh, I'm going to take five minutes out. I'm going to think about it. Now, when, he, when she came by, she came deep. She came with at least 15 to 20 lawyers also. The appeal courts strike it down, so he back on the case. So the judge got some egg on his face. He needs some some payback on whoever snitched on him. So he tried to put uh, uh, little Woody's lawyer, Miss Bumpkins over here, tried to put her into contempt and jail, and she too was not having it. She came with her lawyers. Judge, good morning, Dave Banks. Good morning, Mr. Banks. Uh, her, her legal team is also here. Uh, Mr. Collins, Mr. Obey, Mr. Mormon, and uh, Mr. Winchester. All right, good morning, counsels. Now, Brian Steele was trying to get this mistrial, but now they're going even further. They don't want the mistrial anymore. They want to recuse the judge. They want him off the case because he's tainted, he's corrupt, and he got a vendetta. Or appellate court will review my ruling for you know for abuse of discretion. Certainly okay. understand that, All Judge. Right. And um, in, in, in stating that, Judge, I would just say that um, um, one of the issues that is raised in our affidavit, um, because our motion to recuse is to recuse you from the, the contempt proceeding, not the underlying criminal case in which Your Honor is presiding. And so we we, we really don't have an issue or standing to, to even challenge that. And so to the extent that there is a contempt proceeding that is set for the 25th, Your Honor, um, you, you are a witness to that proceeding. And and so um, because you were a witness. I don't believe you. I, well, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get into any okay. argument, but I, I can't. Okay. So now Bumpkin's lawyer is trying to get him recused from the contempt case because he's a witness to it. And you see the judge is trying to hear it. Uh, he made his ruling and just over talk him, cut him down, shut him down. And this is what's going to get him in trouble. Brian Stills will come up and say the same thing. Motion where a person that they represent was in a meeting ex parte with the court and others and the prosecutor and a witness. And specifically, they wrote in a pleading and under Parrish, which is P-A-R-R-I-S-H versus state, which is 362 Georgia Appeal. <laughs> 392 Division 1, 2022, the lawyer's pleading on behalf of the client becomes a statement of the client. And they said that this court got involved with speaking with Mr. Copeland and assisted in Mr. Copeland testifying against Mr. Williams. So I've added this court to the witness list. I plan on calling the court as a witness in the trial. I've added lawyers Hilton and Love from the district attorney's office to the witness list. And when I cross-examine Mr. Copeland, when that day comes, I'm going to ask him about how much pressure, if any, the court put on him. Yep, and there you go, the checkmate. If y'all don't get it, Mr. Steele is going to get the prosecutor on the stand as a witness. Mr. Steele is also going to get little Woody on the stand as a witness. And he's going to get the judge <laughs> as a witness. You have no choice now, judge, to recuse yourself, you big dummy. Yeah, they got your ass. They got your ass. And in the future, everybody's going to review this and judge the thug, your ass is grass. And you're going to be the one instructing the jury. And... I just can't imagine how that's fair to Mr. Williams. And Mr. Steele laid it on thick. He said with a nice, calm voice, sir, you're the one who's going to instruct the jury. And I don't think that's going to be fair to Mr. Williams. Oh, my God. That doesn't change my ruling at this point in time, respectfully. I also, um, on the transcript, I like the recordings and the um, transcript, and I don't, I object to the court going through it and um, deleting, because to me, the way I understand it, there is zero privilege. So I don't I, understand I'm how- I'm not gonna, Mr. Seale, I can't argue with you about anything such as 
I've made my ruling, okay? If you have some other basis to to ask for the recordings or anything like that, you're going to have to put those in some other pleading. But at this point, I'm going to, Miss, Miss Weaver is going to prepare the record. She does that. And uh, like I said earlier, the record should be ready soon. And you all, as a defense group, will have the opportunity to take a look at those that particular ex parte transcript that was done in chambers. Less anything that is that is totally that, that, that the court considers to be privileged. I'll, and I'm going to let you do that before you examine Mr. Copeland. So you'll have everything that that you have at, the, at, at that point. So, Judge, why do you have to review the transcripts? Well, I, I don't get it. If this ex parte, you did nothing wrong and the defense had the right to be there, why don't you tell them what's going on, what was said in the meeting? And to other, other issues that have been raised, um, as I've told some of the other lawyers here, um, there is a transcript of what occurred in the, uh, in, in the, um, ex parte matter. Um, I will, in fact, I'll authorize defense counsel. I'll, I'll, I'll do a privilege review and see what's, see what needs to be disclosed in terms of impeachment and or Brady. Now, Brian still has a judge by the short hairs, right? He already knows what's going on, but. The judge is trying to do a little review of the tape before he release it. Now, the public probably think it's only the prosecutor, Woody, and the judge in this ex parte meeting. Three people. No. It was 14 people said by Ms. Bumpkins. Go. You could with what you had to work with. Um, and like you said, we don't know. We're speculating what happened in that meeting. And, um, uh, and from my understanding, in the motion, you were present in the meeting, so we don't know what was said. We don't know who who came to who defense, or, or were you representing Woody, or were you not? It's a lot, so many questions that that we want to know. And I will, I'm gonna answer all of them, but I will say this: it was 14 people in the room. 14, okay. And and, <laughs> and the well, the judge shop. I say attorney client. How do you have attorney client privilege when it's 14 people in the room? <laughs> That, that there's no confidence in that whatsoever but that you know that's that's me but thank you so much All right. i still don't get why the trial is still going on and on this is going to be a mistrial if they get a verdict it's going to go straight to appeal court doug is going to be free but man there's an old saying that a good lawyer is cheap a cheap lawyer is expensive and I don't know what's in Young Thug's pockets. I'm not pocket watching. But, dude, you paying this guy for over a year, what, what, $800, $900 an hour? He is worth every penny. He is worth every penny because he's going to get you off this case. But, Thugger, Jeffrey Williams, when you get off, you're going to need a part-time job. You're going to go to working at Popeye's. Because you're going to have to pay this off, man. <laughs> Sorry, Judge. It was nice knowing you. But it's over. And Young Thug is going to walk away. <sighs> That's another example of the leadership of the district attorney. It seeps through the whole county of Fulton County. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And this is the one. This court system was going to take down Donald Trump, Fonnie Willis, Fulton County. These judges, the Superior Court over here, was going to take down Donald Trump. You can't even take down Young Thug. <laughs> Get out of here. It's been a whole year, and not one witness has pointed it out that Young Thug is the leader of the YSL game. A whole year. All this money invested. And nothing. A goose egg. Man, oh man. Anyway... We're going to wrap it up. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you thugs.
and judge. Get your ass off my lawn.